as you live out here in India and you fancied yourself a nice compact V-twin belt-driven motorcycle, well, you'd have to look at brands like Harley Davidson and Indian Motorcycle, uh, at least out here in the country. And yes, you'd have to be willing to shed more than 10 lakh rupees for those motorcycles. Well, that was until Kiwi came out with this cruiser motorcycle you see before you. This is the V302C Cruiser. What makes it so special? What's it all about? We are here to find out. A twin-cylinder, belt-driven motorcycle in this displacement category is rare and uncommon. And so is this motorcycle style. The V302C looks healthy and muscular. Big yet compact. It really catches your eye this one. Alright, maybe not so much so in this all black paint. But you do get the drift. When it's standing still, looking at this bike with its bulky teardrop shaped fuel tank, the wide handlebar with its tiny end mirrors, those cut short fenders with meaty tyres, the substantially sized upside down fork up front with the oil damp twin shocks at the rear, it all makes this bike look very compact, muscular and neat. Well, all that aside from those gaudy looking bunch of wires up front. It appears put together very nicely too, aside from the small gap between the seat and the tank. But that's more down to a design rather than an assembly flaw. The V302C is like a mix of a bobber motorcycle and a shrunken down Harley Davidson power cruiser. It doesn't look like any motorcycle of its engine capacity and it doesn't feel so when you get down to riding it as well. Alright, so the Kiwi V302C as you can see is a very nice and compact motorcycle. In fact, its wheelbase is just around 1420 mm, which is much shorter than something like the Royal Enfield Super Meteor 650 and even something like the Java 42 Bobber for that matter. Uh, now, if you notice, there are some pillion foot pegs out here behind me, but when it comes to seating area, well, the seating space for your pillion, very negligible. And although Kiwi say that there is a pillion backrest in the works, well, if you wanted to buy this motorcycle and wanted to seat a pillion behind you, well, that's pretty much out of the question. Yes, this bike does have its design hiccups. But then again, if you're the sort who'd probably choose to ride alone, you'd have a good deal of fun with this motorcycle because although it's low, a tad long and has a radius that isn't really all the best, it is just so lively and enjoyable in its every demeanor. It rides on chunky tires and the bike feels nicely balanced with you seated just 690mm off the ground in the centre of it all. So this allows you to feel and alter the course of this bike very nicely. But you will have to watch out for deep ruts and oddly shaped breakers because, well with the clearance just being around 158mm, well the base of the bike will scrape quite easily. Feel at the bars is quite neutral when you really want to get going. But Kiwi holds its line with poise around long sweeping bends. Yes, the suspension is set up stiff and you will feel the brunt of practically every bump on the road. But then again, what did you expect from a motorcycle of this sort? If you're looking for a cruiser that will breeze you over bumps and undulations like you're seated on some sort of magic carpet, well, look elsewhere. But I should say that this definitely isn't the most uncomfortable single-seater cruiser bike out there currently. For me, the best thing about this bike has to be its engine. A real highlight of this Kiwi Cruiser has to be its 298cc liquid-cooled V-twin. Now, this works very well in tandem with the 6-speed gearbox and of course, it is belt-driven. That means uh, its maximum power, which is 29.5 PS and uh, maximum torque, which is around 26.5 Nm. Well, power delivery, torque delivery is just spread so well across the power band. The engine is very tractable at low speeds and out on the highway, cruising along at 100 kmph at just below 6000 rpm without a worry in the world. Uh, the engine just humming along very nicely and you will also have much power on hand to carry out a couple of overtakes after that. So that is a real highlight for me with this particular machine. The motor makes weaving through traffic an absolute breeze and the harder you rev, the nicer this bike feels and sounds. And the good thing about all of this is that the tyres and the brakes combo brings this bike to a halt very nicely too. So the Kiwi 302C comes across as a more than decent option in terms of its design, ride and handling. But then again, when you consider its list of features, you will feel shortchanged. Especially with its lack of Bluetooth connectivity and rather dull looking instrument console. 
you do get a sweet looking LED headlamp up front that does its job very well when the sun goes down and you do have dual channel ABS as well. But then this bike misses out on the traction control system that the BD300 that sold in China gets. It all just doesn't justify the bike's steep asking for. So there's just one trim variant of this Keyway Cruiser to be had, but you do have the option of three colorways. Now the cheapest of which is the grey colour scheme, which this motorcycle will set you back by around 3,90,000 rupees ex showroom. Well, this particular colour scheme, the all black, will set you back by 4 lakh rupees. And the most expensive is the one to be had in red. Well, that will set you back by 4 lakh 10,000 rupees. Uh, not all that cheap in today's motorcycling standards and you can get a lot more motorcycle, a lot more bang for your buck elsewhere in the market. But what this motorcycle brings to the table, it's stellar looks, good fit and finish. Well, the engine, the tractability, belt driven, V-twin motor, 300cc, good amount of power, good road manners. Well, it is a very enjoyable motorcycle all in all but then again it is lacking a certain amount of features then there is the question about uh, reliability well because in all honesty we haven't ridden kiwi motorcycles around for a long time to check on their longevity and their durability so there is a big question mark looming above that and then you have something like the super meteor 650 which gives you a lot more motorcycle for a lot cheaper so basically in terms of pricing and its stature in the market this pretty much sits in no man's land, but the biggest setback of this motorcycle has to be that price tag. Mm.